I'd like to take you on a tour of the Uni Collaboration um, website. This is a significant database and it's growing all the time and it's one of the outputs of the Intent project which was an EU funded project. Um, you may have read the report. If you Google Intent EU uh, you'll find the details and to find this site it's Uni Collaboration Dot EU, which again is very straightforward to find. So on the very first page, and this is before we've even signed in or um, joined the site itself, you can see there's a real-time map. Now the um, resources I'm using to talk you through this at the moment were um, created in the early days of the launch of Unicolab. So just make a, a mental note of the picture of that map right now because I'm going to show you the map um, at the end of this presentation uh, as it is represented uh, more recently and I think you'll see a remarkable difference. So once you land on the Unicolab site, one of the first things it's worth going uh, to explore is the partners area. Now the partners area is what will allow you to browse through the classes, institutions and practitioners already on the site uh, and to look at who's there. So within the um, institution area you can look at which universities are already uh, signed up to the site and browse that through. And um, if you decide to join the project then you're going to be able to uh, go to the create part and create your own institution if it isn't there already which you might want to do jointly perhaps with your um, outreach office, international office perhaps. Um, your institutional marketing people may well be interested in uh, contributing to how they're represented within the site. Uh, from a practitioner level, from uh, a university teaching level you can browse through the different practitioners and again you would once you've uh, signed up to the site be able to create your own profile um, and add the classes for example. So let's have a little look at the classes area. So here you can see um, examples and this is a huge database with filters as you can see on the left hand side here uh, for countries, language um, and uh, levels of task. Uh, and you can browse through the existing um, classes who are looking for partners, looking for connections, looking for international collaboration. Um, and from there you'll be able to find uh, institutions that may inspire you to add your own um, class and uh, start to look for collaborators. Underneath this website is a huge um, database and the, that database of, of tasks, practitioners and international institutions um, is growing all the time. Let's have a little look at the task database and because this is um, a website that is primarily concerned with um, language exchange or line intercultural exchange, um, you'll see that many of the tasks created, in fact most of the tasks created, um, use the common European framework for languages to give um, a clear idea of the level of language needed in order to participate in the task. Clearly tasks can uh, be accessible for many different levels and it's all down to the way um, you actually construct your tasks. Um, you'll also find within tasks that there are sequences of tasks that build up. So the uni collaboration website is not just for um, year-long collaboration. You might just want to choose to use it for, to find a particular period of time, short period of time where you want to um, interact, you want your students to interact with an international partner. Uh, another useful area to um, explore is a case study area. Now these case studies pull together um, case studies that were showcased in the intent report. Um, so you'll be able to see in there the, the details of these developed exchanges and how they ran 
and um, you can even vote on them and add your comments. The slides that I'm jumping through to show you this are also downloadable from the site, so I'm, I'm just picking a few, uh, but you can go step by step, as you can see, through the slides and have a guided tour of the Unicolab uh, website, which is quite useful for sharing with your um, colleagues. Uh, I want to show you another important aspect of the website, and that is the community aspect. Okay, so here you can see a screenshot, and this was taken in the early days, and uh, it's now significantly bigger. Um, so once you're a member of the Unicolab, uh, Unicollaboration website, you'll be able to participate in the community. So finally, I said to you right at the beginning that uh, the map on the very ho on the home page of the Intent Project uh, is worth looking at and worth taking a closer look. If you remember it from the very first slide, here it is as it exists um, at the moment. Um, clearly, it's changing all the time. You can scroll in and out of this. It's a Google map, um, a real time. Uh, map that you can interact with, and as you can see, this is really starting to uh, spread. So although it was a European project, it is open globally, and it is growing all the time. And obviously the richness of this database is very much down to practitioners who want to get involved. So these sorts of, uh, the sorts of affordances that, that the Uni Collaboration website um, extends to us are not just about language, they're not just about one-to-one um, -one exchange. The projects that you'll see showcased include multiple partners and uh, many different uh, aspects of online intercultural exchange uh, for students involved in many different um, disciplines and areas act of activity. So if you've got a business school uh, class, for example, who are working perhaps on international management, you can easily connect them uh, with a suitable organization or institution um, internationally and enhance their experiences with some real experiences and conversations uh, with their peers in other countries. So I do hope you will explore the Uni Collaboration website. I think you'll find it's a, a huge resource and a useful resource, and it's growing all the time.